Today on our 2016 Ram 2500, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the BMW Custom Base Rails and Installation Kit for 5th Wheel Trailer Hitches, part number BWR VK2602. So here's what our base rails look like when they're fully installed. Now these are going to allow us to tow a 5th Wheel Trailer with a 5th Wheel Hitch in the back of our bed. Now these rails will work with most industry standard 5th Wheel bases or sliders. Now, when we're not towing and we need a little bit more room, we can remove the base and the fifth wheel out of our bed and the rails are only going to stick up about an inch and a half from the floor. These are steel construction and they have a nice gloss gray powder coat finish opposed to the black that you see on most rails. Now these rails are mounted inboard, which means the brackets they're attaching to under our bed or on the inside of our frame. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's show you how we get it installed. The first step of our installation is we're going to need to put one of our rails towards the front of our cab in our bed. Now we're going to lay it out flat and we're going to find a few different measurements in our instructions and depending on what kind of bed you have is going to be the measurement you're going to need to take. So I'm going to take my tape measure and hook it on the end of my bed, not on the tailgate. I'm going to measure to the amount in the instructions. And I'm going to go across making sure that my rail is nice and level making sure that I have it square. Now once we have our rail in the position that we need it from the edge of our tailgate, then we're going to need to make sure it's centered in our bed. So we're going to take a measurement from our wheel well here to the edge of our rail, and whenever they're the same on each side, we're going to know we have it centered. And if you do have to make any adjustments and move it, just want, I just suggest that you go back and double check your measurements again. The rail position, I'm going to come with a center punch and we're gonna to come to the second hole from the outside and we're gonna make a mark so that we can come back and drill our holes. Now we're gonna use the second holes from the end on both sides. Now if we come to the very center of our rail, we're gonna add two holes, one towards the cab and one towards the tailgate. We're gonna to want to use the one towards the cab on this rail. So we can go ahead and make a mark and we'll mark the other holes on the end as well too. We'll go ahead and slide our rail out of the way. Now I'm gonna be using an eighth inch drill bit to drill my pilot holes through the holes I marked. We're gonna repeat that for all the remaining holes, but I wanna mention before you start drilling, there is certain spots under the bed that are very close to lines or even the fuel tank, so you just wanna double check before you start drilling. Now I already went ahead and removed my spare tire. We're gonna to need to remove our heat shield, one so you can see what's going on a little better, and so we have a little more headroom. Now we're using a 10 millimeter socket to remove these bolts. Now we are gonna have a couple more fasteners up here behind this bar. And there's gonna be one more on this end as well. I'll put this aside for now. Now we're gonna to to double check the holes that we drilled. So I'm gonna take the bracket from my passenger side here and I'm gonna loosely put it in place, making sure that the holes line up that I drilled as well as the holes in the frame. Now we're gonna know it's the passenger bracket because the tabs on the top are gonna to be facing towards the center of our truck. And then the long ear here that has the two slotted holes is gonna be going towards the cab of our truck. Now that we can see that all of our holes line up properly, we need to check the driver's side and then we can enlarge our holes. Now here on the driver's side of our frame, we're gonna have several lines and harnesses that we're gonna to have to remove from the frame. Now, most of them are just held on by push pin fasteners. You need to take a flathead screwdriver or a trim panel tool remover like I have here. And we're just gonna pop out all the fasteners that are holding our harness or any lines in place. You just wanna be careful not to damage any of the hard lines here. And once we have all those removed, we're gonna go ahead and check our bracket and make sure that the holes we drilled line up as well as the holes in our frame over here. Now it may take a little bit of maneuvering and a little bit of patience to get the bracket in place here on our driver's side. But as you can see, the holes that we drilled do line up as well as the holes in the frame. So we can go back up top and drill them out to our final hole size. Now I'm using a step drill bit to enlarge the 1 8 holes that we drilled earlier to a 9 16 now we're going to repeat that for all the remaining holes. 
Now, it's never a good idea to leave bare metal exposed on your vehicle. So I'm gonna come back with a little bit of clear coat and paint the inside of the holes that I drilled. That way, it'll give it a little bit of protection. And at the same time, once it dries, we won't see it. And we're gonna repeat that for all the holes that we drill. We're gonna go ahead and put our rail back in place. And so we're gonna slide it over the holes we drilled and line them up. Once we have everything lined up, we're gonna come back and we're gonna take our half inch carriage bolts and we're gonna drop it down through the holes. Now, as you can see, we're gonna have some corrugation in our bed. Well, they supply us with some U-shaped spacer blocks that are actually gonna go underneath our rail and in between the corrugation so we don't crush our bed. So any spot that has a low spot, we're gonna to wanna to put that spacer in there and it's just gonna go around the bolt. And we'll repeat that for all the remaining bolts. Now we're gonna get ready to mount our bracket. Before we do, I'd like to explain the hardware because it is gonna be a little difficult for you to see and for me to hold everything up in place. But our forward mounting hole here, closest to the cab of the truck, we're gonna be using a longer half inch bolt Then we're gonna follow it with a lock washer and then it's gonna be followed by a flat washer and our bracket's gonna be in place. Before we put our bracket in place, since it has this dip here in the frame, we're gonna take two of our square spacers with a round hole in it, and we're gonna line it up with the hole and put our bracket in place that way. So we can take our bracket, and I already have the spacers and my bolt going through to make it a little bit easier to get it in place. We're gonna line up the holes on the frame. We can loosely put it in hand tight just so it'll support itself. For our rear mounting hole here, we're gonna take a shorter half inch bolt from our kit, followed by a half inch lock washer, and then finally followed by a half inch flat washer, and we can thread it in place. Now on the driver's side, we're gonna do the same thing. We just wanna make sure to put two of our spacer blocks in between that dip right here in our frame, and the hardware is gonna be the same. We're gonna come back and we're gonna take the offset square spacer that we have, and we're gonna slide it over our bolts that are passing through our bed, and then we're gonna secure it down with a half inch flange nut. We're gonna leave these hand tight for right now, but we're gonna do this for all the bolts coming down through our bed that we installed in our rail. In order to determine the mounting location for our rear rail, we're gonna to need to put our base or whatever base we're using into our forward rail here. And then now we're gonna slide our rear rail into place. We line it up with the tabs on our base here. Now once we have our base mounted into the, our forward and rear rail, we're gonna come to our rear rail and we're gonna pull towards the tailgate. And at the same time, we're gonna push our base towards the cab of the truck. That way it's nice and tight and we know everything's gonna be square. We are gonna to wanna to double check to make sure our rails are square. So we're gonna measure each side to the wheel well, to the edge of our rail here, and once those are equal, we'll know it's nice and square. I'm gonna go ahead and start marking the holes that we're gonna to need to drill out. Now these are gonna be a little bit different than the other rails. We're gonna to come to the innermost holes on the edges here, both front and back. And then the center hole, we're gonna be using the center hole that's closest to the tailgate. We can go ahead and remove our base, slide the rail out of the way, and we can start drilling our holes. Now again, I'm gonna be using a 1 8 drill bit to drill a pilot hole, and then we're gonna come back and enlarge it to the final amount. I'm gonna repeat that for all the remaining holes. Now, the two forward holes on the end here, we're gonna drill through our bed, but then we're also gonna to have to drill through the cross member underneath. So you're gonna to wanna to take an extra long drill bit and drill all the way through. And you wanna make sure that once you go through the bed, you wanna come as straight as possible going through the cross member. And we'll repeat that for the other hole on the outside. Now the three rear holes that we drilled that are only going through our bed, I'm gonna come back with a step drill bit and I'm gonna drill them out to a 9 16 I'm gonna repeat that for the other remaining holes. 
The two holes remaining in the front of our rear rail, we're gonna need to drill from the top of the bed, and I'm gonna be using a step bit to drill it out to a 7 8 hole. Now it's very important that you drill from the top and you don't go from the underside of the cross member. And we'll go ahead and drill out the other side as well. Now the holes that we drilled through our cross member here, we're gonna have to enlarge so that our hardware can fall down through. So again, I'm gonna be coming back with a step drill bit and I'm gonna drill this out to a 9 16 Now on the passenger side here, it is gonna be very difficult to drill it from the bottom. So we're gonna find a long drill bit and come from the top and make sure we can get our hardware through. Now our larger 7 8 holes, we're gonna take our spacer and we're gonna slide it down into the hole. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that the holes line up with the bottom so we can get our hardware through. Now we're gonna put the other one in the other 7 8 hole as well. We can go ahead and take our rail line it up over our mounting holes and just like before we can start dropping down our half inch carriage bolts now we can take our long half inch carriage bolts and we're going to drop them down the one that has our spacer in the frame rail and we'll do the same thing for the other side as well now again anywhere that we have a low spot we're going to want to take our u-shaped spacer and we're going to want to put it in between the bed and our mounting rail so that it won't crush whenever we go to torque everything down. Now you may need to lift slightly to get that spacer underneath the rail. And we're gonna wanna do that anywhere that there's a low point at our attachment bolts. So here on the passenger side, we're gonna take our passenger side bracket and that's gonna be the L-shaped one. And we're gonna slide it over our carriage bolt that's coming through our bed. And then we're gonna have two holes in our frame here that are gonna line up. And we're gonna be using the same combination of hardware as before. We're gonna take a half inch hex bolt, followed by a half inch lock washer, and then finally a half inch lock washer to secure it into place. Now I'm only gonna get these bolts in hand tight for now, just to support the bracket so I can get everything else in place. Now we're going to secure the driver's side as well. Now the driver's side is going to be a slightly different. We're going to need to move this harness out of the way just so we can slide our bracket into place. We want to make sure that the two carriage bolts that are coming through our bed are going through our bracket. And then we can secure it to the frame using the same hardware. Now just like on our forward rail, we're going to take the square offset spacer blocks slide them over our carriage bolts, and then we're gonna secure them with a half inch flange nut. Now we're gonna repeat that for all the remaining carriage bolts that are coming through our bed. Using a three quarter inch socket, I'm gonna come back and snug up all my hardware. And we'll repeat that for all the remaining hardware. Now, per the instructions, we're gonna to torque down our bolts that are attaching our brackets to our frame first. I'm gonna be using a three quarter inch socket and the torque amount is in the instructions. Now we're gonna to torque down the rest of the bolts attaching our brackets to our frame. Now I'm gonna come back and again using a three quarter inch socket, I'm gonna tighten all my bolts that are coming through my bed. And we're gonna repeat that for all the remaining hardware. With everything torqued down, we can go ahead and put our heat shield back in place. And then I'll finish up our look at the B&W Custom Base Rail and Installation Kit for 5th Wheel Trailer Hitches, part number BWRVK2602 on our 2016 Ram 2500.